I think first you need to understand ZTA. You need to understand your identity access management solution. You need to understand what's at the core of a zero trust architecture, what it actually means, understand concepts like passwordless authentication, multi-factor authentication, continuous authentication as a concept. And then there's all of the protocols of the Auth 2.0, OpenID, SAML, just-in-time access provisioning. <laughs> Welcome back to our discussion on Armchair Architects as part of the Azure Essential Show of Zero Trust Architecture. Let's get right back to it with our architects. I guess I have one question, though. If you're building something as an architecture where we're talking about you're not trusted and how trust can, trust can be pulled away in sort of an ephemeral way, how do you think about the building of the applications or the system you're building where... The request you just made to me, I'm cool with, but the, but you might then ask a second time, and I've lost the trust. You know, I've I, you know I've lost I've lost that place. So does that mean you have to? Does that mean you have to think about from I don't know, even from a flow perspective, like what happens if the second request comes in and it's missing whatever your need for an identity? I'm just trying to think about like like you know when it comes and goes, right? Like that seems like that's harder, and I everything has to be here. I don't think zero go, trust, right? yeah, David. I don't think zero trust at this point in time goes into the application uh, design itself. Okay. Meaning, uh, when you have a second request, let's say the first request succeeds and the second request uh, doesn't succeed, something would have had to change. Right. And in general, that means that you lost your identity, uh, so right. the credentials couldn't be validated. So now, uh, because there's a third party that validates your credentials, like intro or something like that. And that says, yes, this credential is always valid or still valid. Therefore, the service that is being asked to perform, perform a service on behalf uh, of the other application will say, yes, great. If you can't do that, then something changed, uh, meaning somebody revoked your uh, credentials and they became invalidated. Or, or Eric's example. Expired, is what I'm thinking, Uli. Like that's yeah. another case, right? If you, or Eric's point where... Um, let's say the requirements for the uh, application is hosted on iOS and all of a sudden you start to see uh, iOS 18.3 being released and now there's a hard requirement. If you're not on 18.3, you're not going to happen. Again, most of the time this happens with more grace periods because, of mm -hmm. course, switching on the fly is not that easy, um, but you could think about it. So the way I think about this is you have to change something before... Uh, you would lose the trust per se, meaning something yeah. changed that you had before uh, that isn't correct anymore, and now you have to remedy before you gain trust again. Right, and I'm just thinking the applications may have to be like, okay, cool, back to back to the, um, you know, back to the auth uh, flow for you, you know, before before we can continue. So you don't think that happens, Eric? You're making you're making sort of like the dubious face. Well, no, no, actually, it's not dubious at all. Those are very good points. I was just thinking about trying to expand and inhabit the architect's mind. Like, so I think that there's some additional layers here that we can kind of pile onto this. Like many API gateways today, you know, services that from Azure and AWS and the like, they have granular access policies that have zero trust uh, access kind of baked into those policies. Um, and many of them implement context aware access policies as well. Um, and for, from a UX standpoint, this can actually be instrumental because they're not only, I think app developers need to understand that zero trust signals from a, uh, a system like that can actually be based on user behavior as well. So if there are different or atypical behaviors that are being expressed through your, your UX, that's also a signal that might um, increase the risk score of the zero trust architecture infrastructure to say, uh, you're now revoked, right? Um, the other thing to think about also is like from a microservices communication standpoint. So there's like, um, I think it's called mutual TLS off between services. There's MTLS, a, yeah. a, yeah, MTLS. So you can enforce strict security policies when the app, when the microservices chat with each other and then implement identity based workload security, like service mesh solutions like Istio or, um, you know, Dapper or any of those. Um, to have the inter-process communication happen between those microservices in that ZTA kind of context. Okay, so I have one last question. So, uh, you know, for, for, for the ZTA stuff that we're talking about here. Um, and I know it's not the same for each one of the solutions you might choose, but okay, 
I'm an architect. I'm like, I want to get into this. What do I have to start with? I'm presuming Uli is going to say, get your identity uh, stuff in order, get your ho identity house in order. But what are the other steps I might want to think about as an architect when I'm first getting into this to just to, to, to work my way in a, in, a, in a reasonable fashion? I think first, um, you, you need to understand um, ZTA. You need to understand your identity access management solution. You need to understand what's at the core of the zero trust architecture, what it actually means, understand concepts like passwordless authentication, multi-factor authentication, continuous authentication as a concept. Uh, and then there's all of the protocols, uh, the Auth 2.0, OpenID, SAML, uh, just-in-time access provisioning, device posture, I think that's a good, it's good to have that foundational understanding, especially if you're doing mobile app development against secure resources. Mm -hmm. uh, then it's figuring out like, okay, um, now that I've implemented the zero trust architecture, I know it's there. Now I'm going to actually write my application to exist in that space. Um, you can't just take it for granted that the zero trust architecture is orchestrated or designed and implemented in a way that's performant. Um, so every type of hop that you have, every type of continuous verification of identity and behavior means extra cycles uh, that you have to deal with from a latency perspective. Um, and then it's you're really understanding uh, from a microservices perspective what your API gateway enforces, whether or not you need a service mesh, how you're you know continually validating and verifying apps should be able to talk to other apps and services should be able to talk to other services. So those, that's just like a, a laundry list that rattles around in my brain. Yeah. Uli, yeah. you want to have the last word on this? Absolutely. Always. Um, <clears throat> so think about it uh, this way. I think user identity is always very clear. People have a very clear perspective who people are. They use whatever enforcement mechanism, directories, and so forth to do that. Oftentimes, applications, services, and other resources don't really have that strong feeling, uh, a strong identity. Um, and thinking through what that means and how do you do that, meaning is the application going to represent itself as a resource or is it representing on behalf of the user? Those right. kind of concepts are really important to think through. Always have been, but getting more strongly important in the world of CTA. So I think the list that Eric rattled off is very good. I would really start with identity all up because it is such a fundamental building block. And then one of the things that we have done as Microsoft is this thing called the Secure Futures Initiative, which ultimately has these six pillars of how we think about operational security, really. And there's micro-segmentation, uh, which is service meshes and other things. Uh, there's identity, uh, uh, secrets, and those kind of things. Right. And there's also, when you're building scenarios or environments, how do they get built? Who owns them? Um, how do you maintain them so that they follow ZTA and are always up to date and stuff like that? So I think it would be good uh, for people to look at the Secure Future Initiative stuff, pick the pieces that make sense for them, and then track their progress against it to say, oh, okay, we are at 60%, 50%, 100%, whatever it is, so that they can really get a feeling of how uh, Zero Trust enabled they are as an organization and where the holes are. Super cool. Well. I think we'll stop here because there's a lot more security stuff to talk about. Uh, thank you both for being here. Thank you, everybody, for listening. I hope you'll join us on other episodes this the security season. I think you're really going to dig it. So we'll look forward to seeing you on, on more episodes of our show. Take care.